just about seven now. So I'm probably gonna start off with a, re a little bit of reiteration about um, getting the fabric prepped. Um, again, I use a white glue. Um, Elmer's is okay. If this, this is a lot thicker, you can use it. Um, try not to use the uh, washable school glue because then it's a little less, um, a little less durable. So to do this, here, over here, I just put a little bit of glue in there. And most of my fabric I've already got sized. So I got that, and this is a little weird doing this where I don't see it as well. And I get a big paintbrush and stir it together till it's well stirred. And you see, it's about like like milk. Looks like milk at that point. And put the lids on stuff and then I'll tilt this down here and you can see a little bit better. So this is a piece of velvet and this is just a little scrap of a corner off of something else that I've cut but it's big enough to put the um, pieces on there. It's big enough to put the pe lay the pieces on there like that. So it, this piece will be big enough to cut out a flower, maybe two flowers. So it's big enough for me to size. And it's, I brush it on pretty quick. Um, this is acetate velvet. So when you do it on cotton, it looks a little bit different. And you just want to get the back side of it wet. Um, you don't want it soaking through. That's why you kind of do it quickly and spread it pretty thin. When you put it on cotton, it, it's a little harder to see where you're going with it. So that piece is all done. I'll set it over to the side. Um, and I am going to show you, let's see if I need a piece of the cotton down here. Okay, so I've got this piece that didn't get done very good in the corner. And this is a cotton velveteen. So when you put it on the cotton, let's see it kinda, you can't see it as good. It soaks it in a little faster. But I didn't get the edges done very good. You can see right there, I didn't get it very good the first time I did it. Doing it on camera. Um, I try to keep some of this done up and ready for when I want to play with flowers. See, that's starting to get too much on there. Oops, that's starting to get too much on there. It's kind of soaking through. So I need to stop, lay that one to the side. Set my glue out of the way. Once my big paintbrush out. It's got glue. And then it's wipe off my mat. And try not to cause any havoc. So, the first thing we're going to do is I want to trace off a flower. So, that's the selvage edge. So you can see the grain can run this way or this way. So selvage 
lengthwise grain and then crosswise grain. And then this is the diagonal grain. And I'm gonna set that there to keep it kind of, you can see it. Whoa, sorry about that. Told you I might have it a little bit wobbly. Okay, so I'm going to set that down like that. And you'll see that there are marks on the pansy petals. So I'm going to want to do one this way, and then I'm going to want to flip it and do one the other way, because you kind of want these on the bias. Um, the petal wise on the bias. So that's your straight of grain. And this is my silver welder's pencil. It works pretty good. Just a second, I'm making my thing come up on my computer so I can see it better. So I'll trace one out, and this does not have to be perfect. And if you want to, and then you see it's going to be flipped. So you've got to this this particular one's the most important one to do that too. So that's the bottom pedal and I'll put a B on the inside of that. So that one's the tops. And again, we want it to be kind of on the bias. Can you see that? On the bias. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's a reason I'm doing it. I'll show you the reason in a little while when we get them cut out. Um, if you're having problems with this, you can put a piece of double-sided sticky tape on there, and then when you flip it over, but on both sides, and we flip it over, you can just kind of stick it in place. That way, it doesn't. So is everybody staying warm? The weather out here is a little bit on the horrible side. And then that one is on the straight of grain. So I'll put it Oh, I'm going to mark these as top. So the one I leave unmarked is actually the bottom center piece. So, let's see. I've got them marked out like that. And make sure that I've flipped them so that I've got opposite ways going on that. And then I'm going to cut them out. So, 
raise that up just a little bit. And we'll see here. So if you've done this right, then you're not going to have a problem with them fraying out. Um, if you do cut them out and the edges want to fray, uh, you just go back around with a little bit of thin white glue and paint around the edges. That'll keep it from fraying out too bad. So there's the first piece. I'm going to get these all cut out and then I'm going to show you how to put the stems together. So what I'm doing is I'm, because my internet is really bad here at the house, my videos are always um, broadcast from my phone. So it uses up my phone. I'm, I'm on my phone internet, basically. Um, I actually have, as a general rule, on my house computer, my house internet, less than one megabyte per second. So... Sometimes I get just over one megabyte per second. So it's, it's, it's painful to say the least. So then we deal with the fact that I have to be able to see what's going on as well as you and trying to show you what's going on. That can also be a little bit challenging. And you can use any size of scissors you want, as long as you kind of get the little ruffly things going on around the edge of the petals. And I got one more to go on this one. We might do more than one flower by the time it's all said and done with. Like I said, they don't have to be perfect. Um, you don't want to cut these edges out smoothly. You want kind of a little ruffle to the edge. They look a lot more natural that way. So, I have my base bottom petal. I have these side bottom petals. And then I have the two top ones like that. Maybe I'll raise that up just a little bit so I can get a little bit more angle down. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see this. 
So each flower will have five petals like that. And that's what we're going to start with. Um, but the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set these to the side and I'm going to show you about the stamens. Now, you can either use beads and this type of wire, or you can use this type of wire and use yarn. Or if you'd rather, you can do like embroidery floss. Um, I like, this is a, this is not wool yarn. This is actually alpaca yarn. Um, but I had one little odd skein of this golden yellow and I've been using it for all sorts of things because there's really not enough of it for me to do anything with. And, well, it just kind of works out that that works. So I'm going to my pair of pliers. I've already pre-cut these to about the length that I want and I've already pre-made a few of them. Um, but I'm going to show you... Okay, so I'm going to show you this craft wire. Okay, so I'm going to cut a little piece about, about yay long. Uh, how long is yay long? It might be good if I got the little ruler out. You could see how long yay long is. I'm not seeing my little ruler right off the top of my head. So, there's a ruler. So, this little ruler is six inches long. That's just slightly over six inches. And I'm going to put this size bead. I'm going to put like five or six of them on there. It kind of depends on how fat the beads look to me at the moment. I'm just going to curl it around there. And twist it. And because I'm a farm girl, like things nice and tightly twisted. I'm used to doing this on fence as well as. So then you've got one like that. So that's how you do the bead ones. Um, if you have thinner wire, you can do thinner, you can do smaller beads. So thinner wire, smaller beads. Um, now this one, I'll get out my bottle of tacky glue and I'll be lazy here. And this is why I have to have a wet wash rag underneath here because I invariably, oh, I don't like that. That one's all messed up already. All right, so if I haven't, messed up my glue and I must have left the lid off a while ago. I just stick it down in there and get a little glue on the end. And because it's the tacky glue, it grabs pretty quick with this wool yarn. And I start down from the top just a little ways, down from the top, and then just roll it on there and roll it up to the top and then back down and then back kind of to the middle. And that's probably, what is it, almost half an inch that I've rolled on there. And then I'm going to 
throw a little half hitch over it. And put just a little dab of glue there. And tighten up my half hitch. And then take my pliers and bend them over like that. So it makes kind of a little round and twist it up a little bit more and perhaps throw another half hitch over it. So the reason I like the reason I like the uh, wool is it grabs better than using the there you go like that. All right, I'm gonna set that one aside. I'm gonna wipe my hands off because I just got glue on my fingers. And we are going to prep the petals. So prepping the petals. I need either my all or this or the corner of this. I'll use all three to kind of show you. And what I do, this will be a little upside down. Let's see, let's put my glasses on so I can see if I'm getting this on here. Okay, yep, okay. So I start in the middle of it and you draw it out like that, so like that really like this one best. So you're scoring it pretty hard. One straight line down the middle. And you do one side and then hold on to it and do the other. And then do another one there. And another one there. And another one there. Another one there. And just kind of vein it up. And you see how that's pulled it out of shape? That's exactly what we want it to do. You look at this side and you see that it's left these lovely veins so it actually looks like a petal. Now, once we've got it like that, we want to grab an upper corner in a lower corner, put your thumbs in the middle of it and pull it. And then do the other way, pull it. So we're pulling this and working it. And then you see how it starts to cup? Now it's starting to look like a real petal. And take the edges and it's kind of like doing, uh, kind of like pinching pie crust. Honest to goodness, this thumbnail is not dirty. I bit it backwards. That's the bloodline where I tried to break it off way below the quick a couple weeks ago. So that was kind of painful, but it's better now. So it's kind of like doing pie crust. You know how you kind of do it between your thumbs and you... Then I kind of pull it again because I want it. So it looks kind of like that. We're going to do the same thing on all of these petals. Start with one down the middle. Um, you can accidentally cut through the fabric using an awl like this. It takes yeah, a little bit of practice to get it 
find something that's sharp enough that works well to do this, but also dull enough that you're not cutting through. And I always position my finger and then kind of pull and draw against it away from it. And I usually go and I score all of the petals and then I go back and pull on them to curl them up a little bit. scored and then on the other side you see that and then you pull them while well, shoving your thumbs in you pull them out and this curls a petal and this gets gets you a fairly well shaped petal without having to have the nifty little and kind of expensive uh, flower, floral irons um, if you have ever seen any professionally done ones they they've been they've generally been done with floral irons to get the nice curve you can just heat them up and clamp them it's like using a curling iron on your so we're pull it and pull it on the bias and then we kind of do a little pie crust thing around the edge Okay, until we've got them kind of all starting to shape up. And tweak, 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 tweak around the edges like this. And then that one. So now we come down with a grumpy little dog over there. I'm disturbing her nap. So now we come down. That's a top one. That's a top one. These are the two bottom and this is the bottom center one. The flower I was looking at, the pansy I was looking at that was in this color, has kind of a burgundy colored uh, middle in this one. And you can kind of see where I painted that one. That one's kind of got white on that one. And then this one, the lighter colored one I looked at as an example, had purple in the middle. So we're going to use a Sharpie on these three to get some coloration um, so that it kind of gives us a similar look to that. And I'm going to use the purple Sharpie if I can find it. There's the purple Sharpie. So I found a purple Sharpie. Um, and let's see if I can do this where you can see it. I'm going to set the two top ones back, set the two side ones there. So instead of going straight up and down with this, I'm going to use the side of it. And so when you just kind of go very lightly over the top of the velvet, You see how those uh, 
where you've scored it kind of pops out. And I'll bring that back down into this middle part. And I'm almost going to kind of bring it down in a heart shape. So if you can see. And it doesn't have to be really dark. You can kind of darken it up a little bit more towards the center, but you want to kind of fade it out as it gets out to the edges. And so the same goes on, on the side ones. Use the side of the Sharpie tip. got the side of the Sharpie tip. So that's probably all I'm going to do to this particular colored one. Is use this Sharpie. Um, if you look at pictures of real ones, you can get some ideas on some coloring patterns. Um, like the dark burgundy ones, I used a black Sharpie on, and then I used a little bit of yellow to kind of highlight it with a paintbrush. And this one, this purple one, I used white um, from the, from my, and I'll, I'll do, I'll probably do one like this too. I used white from my watercolors and then the yellow from the watercolors and then I used a really fine tip black Sharpie to draw those little lines in there. So you can do, you can make them look kind of the way you want. So I think, I think I'll go with one of the bead middles on this one. And the first thing you do is this bottom bottom piece is we're going to wrap it around like that and as I throw the thread you can do the you can actually put this on a put like a threaded needle and do this um, sometimes it's easier to do I'm going to show you what I do first, and then maybe if you want to do a needle, you can. So I, I make a little loop. That's a doubled thread, a little loop. And that loop goes over that. And I want that to land right about there. And then, I wrap around that pretty tightly. And I put just a dab, just a little dab of glue on there. Basically, I'm just trying to keep the thread from unwinding. And the reason you might want to use a needle and thread is then you can take a stitch there and keep it from, an, it might be easier for you to handle. Um, I've done enough of these that it doesn't bother me to uh, do it like that. Now, these two are going to be placed with the longer part of it to the bottom. So they'll end up looking like that. I'm going to flip this over so it's to the back like that. And this one will go on this side. And this one will go on this side. So 
Let me get my hand out of the way in just a second here. So you kind of see like that. And then again, we're going to wrap that around pretty tight. So that when you flip it back over, it's like that. So that's your bottom three. Done like that. Again, I've got that pulled pretty tight and I'm holding it in place. Now, this is the hard part, putting these last two on. You take the top two and you're going to want to cross them over each other. So they're mostly going to overlap like that. And the little bases will be close to each other. So, bottom, tops, tuck those two forward and put these two on top there. And once again, we're going to firmly very, very firmly wind your thread around there. I'm going to do a little half hitch to kind of keep everything in place. again put a little bit of glue there I'm going to have to poke a hole in my glue because I left it what happens when you leave your lid off too long glue covered pin back into my pin cushion that would be bad a few more little wraps around there like that so basically at that point you have a whole flower um yeah, it'll be available later to watch. Um, you could use a small gauge wire. What I find with the small gauge wire is I have more breakage and a harder time getting it tight. And then it also adds more bulk in the back. Um, you can do it like that if you want to. Um, it doesn't work well for me. Um, so that's just, that's why I use the thread. Um, I'll show you on another one how to uh, do it with a needle, and, and that might be a little bit easier for some of you. Once you get it to that point, then you've got to cover up all of that. So you can do that um, with floral tape. I'm really not liking this floral tape. So I haven't done this in a while either. This is just some cotton fabric that's been torn in really thin strips. Um, 
Let's try this glue bottle again, see if it'll be nice. doesn't want to behave. So yeah, here I'm making a mess. actually harder to do this and try to have it where somebody can see what you're doing than it is to do it and just worry about what you're doing yourself. So This is another reason I really kind of prefer the floral wire. So, yep, there's that one. can't even see it. There's that one kind of like that. So, should we do one that's painted on a little bit so you can see that technique? I probably should have cut out another one. Oh, also, if you've got the, the, you'll have the violet on there out of the little scraps of velvet. You can cut these little violets. And they're basically done in the same way. Only I use the ready-made, little ready-made pips on the end of that, and they're just threaded through. So you cut the violet out along the lines on there, um, score the leaves so they curl up. the leaves with your fingers kind of just mash it and then you want a hole right in the middle and if you're really careful and don't jab it through your finger that's a really good thing put some glue there and goes right down the middle and then you just scrunch it up around there a little bit. These won't turn out perfect, but they make great little accents. You can also do these in like silk taffeta. They turn out pretty cute. And you've got a little tiny, little tiny one there. So those, those work out of the scraps between those. Okay, so I'm gonna set that one to the side a little bit. And... I probably should have cut out 
couple of these earlier. And I could have just shown you the not terribly hard to make. The biggest thing that you're going to want to uh, deal with is the learning to get the learning to get the velvet at the right amount of glue on the back. Um, and my favorite fabric to work with is the cotton velveteen, but all of the velvets, all of the velvets will work, but don't even try to do stretch velvet. That just is a nightmare in itself. So that's, that's not real velvet. That's Dan's costume fabric. <laughs> it won't work for something like this. You have to have a woven velvet, something that's got some body to it, and that when you stretch it out of shape, it's because you cut it on the bias enough and you're doing it on purpose enough. set of the purple ones. Again, we're going to do the same thing. We find the bottoms, and then this is the middle base, and then those are the tops. So the bottom and the middle base are the ones that we're going to be painting on. Start in the center and then kind of work your way to the sides. It curls it better that way. Okay, those are the ones we're going to paint. Emboss. Top ones, they won't get painted. Um, pull them to get the curl and work the edges a little bit. I pie crust them. And then pull there, and there, and there, and there. So those are the top ones. They won't get any painting done on them. These are the bottom ones, and they will get painted. I keep wanting to move these out of the line of sight. That one, I didn't quite get cut biasy enough. It'll be okay though. All right, 
so those will end up like that. So they're out of the way. Okay, these are a cheap set of paints. So again, I want to do kind of a heart shape on this. And shall I get the one out we're kind of copying? So, working on that one. So I'm just kind of lightening the center area up a little bit. A little bit of paint there so it hasn't got to be real deep like I said this is I'm working with this because this is what I got um, and a lot of the period references talk about using your watercolors to paint on silks their watercolors were probably better than the quality of watercolor that I have So I've got those three done like that. I'm scoring on the back. Yeah, I'm scoring the backs of them. Um, Michaela uh, asked if I was scoring the fronts or the backs and I'm scoring on the backs of them. You score on the backs and then it shows through to the front. If you try to score on the front, it just doesn't quite work out as well. Now I'm picking up a little bit of yellow because I want this yellow here in the middle. So 
So I added just a little bit of the yellow in the middle. Now these are a little bit damp at this point now. And that's all the painting I'm going to do on them. But actually, after you get it to that point, if they, uh, if you let them dry a little while, I probably should have done this set first. Um, you probably really want to let them dry a little bit before you actually try to work with them because on the this one, I went back and I rescored them a little bit on the back to help them shape a little bit. But I took a thin Sharpie and drew very small lines and because it's not dry yet it's not going to work so now we got to kind of set those there like that and let them dry a little bit but basically it'll go together the same way you put this one on first then you put the two side ones on behind it and then the top ones end up going on sandwiching it between and then you fold them back so first second and third and then the top ones go on like that and then by the time you open it all out you end up with something like this all right, so now I'm gonna turn the video back over to me so I can answer any questions. Um, anybody, uh, I cannot read the questions with my glasses on at this distance. I really probably ought to have trifocals. So has anybody got any questions I can answer um, about the construction methods or anything? Anything that I'm not explaining well? Is there anything I can answer for you? Um, the scoring tool I used, um, this is a bone awl. And this is one that's kind of sharp, but not really sharp. So it's not one that I usually use for, um, say, making eyelets in something because it's not quite sharp enough for that. My eyelet awls are really pretty darn sharp. <laughs> um, I've seen people that had like a broken bone crochet hook that sharpened them or something like that. But you can use just a dowel rod that's been sharpened. Um, like this one was a dowel rod that, a little piece of a dowel rod that I think it's probably bamboo that came in one of those polyfill stuffing bags, you know, for the polyfill, for making stuffed toys. And it's almost sharp enough. It's a good pokey stick when you're turning things inside out or something like that. But it, it, may, it does pretty decently to score things. Anything that's got an almost point on it. I tried scoring a, one of the flowers with this little pair of scissors and I ruined a petal because it they're really really sharp on the end and I cut right through it so that wasn't a good idea so your scoring tools need to be kind of sharp um kind of sharp but not excessively sharp so they'll cut through the fabric so that's what my scoring tools are uh, anybody else have any questions or want to see the flowers up close So there's the back of this one that's been has the beaded. I use the I use the modern uh, floral tape on it. I don't know. I, does anybody have a wonderful source for decent floral tape anymore? <laughs> because I have not found a decent. I have not found a decent type of, um, so the paint I've been using, sometimes I use just the acrylic paint, 
like this. And this was, it was just a set of watercolors from a hobby store. So it's just a little set of watercolors. This is a cheap set of watercolors. So if you have a better set of watercolors, it would probably work better. Um, this is the set that I was playing with um, painting on uh, silk. Um, hang on just a second, I'll grab it. Because I see it right here on the floor, it fell down. Stretch! Okay, so <laughs> I've been uh, I've been playing painting um, uh, with watercolors on black silk. So this is China silk that's been um, pasted on the back to like make, make like a little canvas on a piece of uh, cardboard. <laughs> I I think you're probably right. There is is none, and I'm assuming you're talking about the floral tape that's worth a darn. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the, the floral tape I, I've been having a hard time with. So I've been, I've been experimenting with, it works best and it's pretty warm in the great room tonight. Um, we have the fireplace going when it's this cold outside. We keep our, we have a gas fireplace that we keep going all the time because it feeds off our gas well out back. Yeah, I... I do sometimes add leaves later. I've been playing with a leaf pattern and I actually did the same thing as I do with the flower petals. I used a green velvet and I took a picture of, I took a picture of the, uh, of a pansy leaf and I kind of just sketched it out and then I cut it out after I'd sized the velvet just like I do on the floral leaves and then I scored it down the center and then down the sides to make veins and then once that was kind of curled and and veined to my liking then I dipped up to there of this floral wire this it's the the fabric or the the thread covered floral wire i dipped it in my once again i tipped it in my tacky glue i kind of like this tacky glue and then i stuck it on there and then i just left it alone until it was quite dry um i don't suggest you mess with it until it's pretty darn dry because if you do then it doesn't turn out as well but I think it, I don't know, I, you guys like, pan, does it look like a pansy flat leaf to you? It looked like a pansy leaf to me, so I was relatively happy with it. But that, I just, um, I just sized it, I just took, got on Google and I'm like, what does a pansy leaf look like? And I kind of eyeballed it. I'm pretty notorious for eyeballing things <laughs> so <laughs> um yes you can use it with satin um i actually the rose the the pattern has the rose petals on it and i used uh, silk charmeuse but what i found if you use a satin or charmeuse is you need to put it like in an embroidery hoop frame so that's really really taut and you've got to paint it on pretty quick and sometimes it streaks through a little bit on the front so yes you can use it on satin um it doesn't look as well for the pansies um pansies just have that depth um, so that the, the velvet looks right for the pansies, but I have done, um, uh, taffeta and I've done both taffeta and a silk charmeuse. Um, what I did when I did those was put them in a large embroidery hoop 
and I turned the oven on really, really low so that it was kind of warm in it and left the door slightly open and I painted the glue on and then put it in the oven where the warm air was kind of already going very, it was like at a low temperature. It was like at 150 or something like that. So it was warm, but not so hot that it was going to burn my fabric. <laughs> and Elaine did that with natural fabrics. So if you do that and you paint it on, and it, it takes a little bit of practice. It's, it's harder it's harder to manage the silk, the satins, and the uh, no spray starch won't work for the sizing. Um, tried that. It works when you're working with cotton. It will not work for the uh, pansies. There's a way you can do cotton carnations. And what you do is, and it really a spray starch isn't great for that. I'm gonna get a piece of paper and I'll show you what you do. So to do a cotton carnation, you start off with a strip of cotton and you starch the ever loving heck out of it. Um, you want it really, really starched. You want it, paper starch. So actually dip starching works better than spray starching, but you can put enough spray starch on there to make it work. You fold your strip. And I didn't quite cut this wide enough. So I would say you would start with a strip. Let me measure this. Let's see, that's three inch strip. I would probably start with a four or a five inch wide strip. And you fold it in half like that. So this is the folded side up here. And you go along and you make little cuts almost all the way to the bottom leaving the folded edge up here intact. I'm getting all kinds of flower making stuff tonight. So before you yell at me for using my, my good scissors on paper, this is not my good scissors. This is the pair that I take to 4-H that have a sharpener So when you do this with the cotton fabric, this isn't going to get quite as folded. And you start rolling it up. So this will like leave loops around, around a piece of like bend a loop on the end of your floral wire and then you'll roll that up around it like that and you just keep rolling strips until you end up and it will look like a little carnation um calicos like pink calicos work really well to make something like that but uh, you can't use, I, I've tried spray starch on the uh, velvet and on the satins and the silks and stuff, and it just doesn't work as well. It hasn't got enough stiffness, and by the time you get enough on there and get it ironed, it soaks through, and then it gets blotchy, and it just, it doesn't work very well. So no, I don't recommend spray starch for sizing. You almost have to go with the glue to make it work for the little flowers like that. Anybody else got anything they want? See, these are still wet. I don't think a sugar solution would work. Um, you just about have to use a glue. So you're talking about, you could probably use a, um, like a paste glue. Like if you do 
uh, little wallpaper paste glue. It's got it's got to be able to be put on and it's got to be, it's got to dry itself. Um, you've got to be able to get it on just one side. So the sugar solution is probably going to soak through and probably not gonna be real great. Um, this is actually, this, this is my jar of Yes Paste and I haven't tried Yes Paste, but I'm pretty sure that it would probably work. Um, but it's, it's like, it, it behaves like the old fashioned, uh, paste, um, that you would use. It's, it's a, uh, paste made out of, of cellulose for the biggest part. It's, uh, like wallpaper paste, like making out of like flowers, flower, not flowers. <laughs> Um, so you might be able to use something like this. Now this is Yes Paste. It's good. It's pretty good stuff. Um, I think I think that would probably work because uh, it gets fairly stiff. I've used this in shoe making um, when I'm doing the toe hardener. Um, so I know it will set up and harden. I also know that I can depend on this really reliably to be able, I, I can go back and I can steam the pan. If they get crushed, I can steam them and kind of freshen them back up and reshape them if I use this. For a lot of other things, um, you crush your pansy and it just will not revive itself. Um, I know this because I have them on a ball gown and I've crunched the snot out of them before. So yeah, you can, you can, you, Stick with glue. I really, really and truly, you're probably gonna wanna stick with glue unless you're doing a cotton uh, flower, so. Are there any other questions? Anything you want to, s did, do I need to do again on anything? Um, these are really pretty wet still, so I can't really. I'm going to go ahead and put it together wet. Um, see if I can thread a needle without having my glasses on. If I can get it far enough away from me, I can. So sometimes it's easier when you're putting them together if you sew them around. So that would take a little stitch right through the base. And then wrap. another stitch so it's right there um, how many types of flowers have I created I don't do a lot of them um, I like pansies so I do pansies quite a bit they just they feel old-fashioned to me um, they work with a lot of things so that's Put on either side of that one and I'll close it in and I'll take a stitch and it's wet so it's hard to push through. That kind of holds it in place a little bit better. So, folds out like that. And then I'll do, 
those overlapped. And now it's like that. And these come in down on the top like that. So. little stitches around so I've done roses roses take roses take an awfully lot of time because it's not just five petals you're talking quite a few petals to make a rose look halfway decent so roses are harder um, cabbage roses are hard to get to do right uh, there are some other kinds of flowers that you can do that look reasonably good. But pansies are the easiest. Pansies and the little violets are the easiest. Okay, so it's kind of looks like a crushed butterfly at that point. But once you fold it back out, once you fold it back out, it looks pretty decent. And sometimes you have to kind of twist it a little bit to get the tops in place. And when you put the when you put the wrapping on here, um, there are a few articles in. Uh, there's one a Buttrick one that's called the Uses of Crepe Paper, that has some uh, crepe paper flowers in it. There are articles and I can't tell you off the top of my head the years but there there are articles in Peterson's and Godey's both that have wax flower making that have the pattern shapes the petal shapes for wax flowers and there's actually some flowers um, that are made um, from wool and they talk about them making the wool flowers and oh dear um I have to think about when I was in Nebraska visiting my friend Kelsey. She took me to this lovely little uh, uh, little museum, little town museum. It was pretty good size because it was like an old school. But they had this really nifty um, whole wreath made of wool flowers. And basically they were yarn wrapped around wire and then like woven back and forth between. And so there's, there's also directions for making wool flowers. So if you're wanting to make other kinds of flowers uh, that are kind of similar, um, there are directions and patterns in some of the old magazines for wax flowers. Um, and I can look those up probably tomorrow and uh, put some dates on them better. I think I've got those written down in one of my uh, research piles. But there's like there's like shapes to cut the petals out and stuff for um, wax flowers and get some directions for them. They're not real great directions. Um, and there's, you know directions for doing wool flowers. There's even some actual directions for like crocheted flowers. And I think those are in the 1870s, I think. I'm not entirely positive on my dating on those. I just know that they're, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Oh, you know what? I think the crocheted flowers may have been in the 1850s. I'll have to go, I'll have to look up some dates on you for that. But they're, you can find some stuff. Um, most of it won't actually be working with the fabric. Um, 
because usually they do um, when they do fabric uh, flowers you're seeing a lot of in that that time frame you'll see a lot of the fabric flowers being um, purchased and because they've got all these really nifty little flower irons to make these beautiful 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 flowers um, and we can't completely reproduce that without having those nifty little flower irons um, so there's like some flowers that you can do without this is this is one of them that you can do without um, the little cotton uh, carnations turn out pretty cute I've done those in pinks and blues and whites and I just use uh, muslin or uh, uh, cotton uh, dress fabric, like quilting fabric, in a period uh, print. Actually, if you do like gingham or a period, uh, a really tiny, uh, little ditzy uh, style calico, um, like in the pink, like the, the double pinks, the double pinks make really, really cute little carnations. It's got enough color variation, it, it gives it depth. So there's, you can do things like that. Um, I also use floss, uh, the floss, uh, embroidery floss to make dandelions. That turns out pretty cute too. And they all look pretty decently on hats and stuff. They are within the realm of historical possibility. Um, but not, it's as correct as using most of the modern polyester silk flowers that we end up having to use on hats these days. So I think, I think the pansies are a lot of fun. Um, anything else that I can show anybody? All right, if not, um, I think I've kind of go through here and look and see. I think I've kind of answered most of the questions. Um, if nobody's got any more questions, I will close it for the night. Um, I hope everybody has a great evening, and I hope you've learned something. And I'll go ahead and save this, and it'll post to the webpage so you'll be able to find it later. So we'll see you later. Bye.